Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon with Israeli News Live and uh, wanted to share some things with you guys today. Uh, I was doing, I was actually going to go into Joel and I kind of backed off of doing that as of right now because of something I stumbled on on the Dead Sea Scrolls. But I was going to get into this, especially about the Valley of Jehoshaphat, for there, there, there will sit, I, sit uh, there will I sit to judge all nations round about, put you in the sickle for the harvest is ripe, come tread you for the wine press is full, the vats overflow for the wickedness is great. And, you know, listen, even John, Jesus says, I send you, lift you up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest. All right, we're going to get into this later. I'm going to share with you the fulfillment thereof. And, of course, the Valley of Jehoshaphat. What really is the Valley of Jehoshaphat? Um, that, well, let's see, I think right here. Here we go here. This was an old photo I found of the Valley of Jehoshaphat here uh, printed on there. And, of course, it is the Kidron Valley. It's also known as the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Many, many, many different places refer to the Kidron Valley is the Valley of Jehoshaphat. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, we're going to go into that a little bit later. But first, I want to go back to the Dead Sea Scrolls here with you. Uh, the word Zarim I have on here, I went into that secondarily. But I first started off with, um, let me just, let me back this up a little bit for you. Um, let's see. You choose, uh, let's, uh, da, 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 let me make sure where I'm at here first here. Uh, yeah, here we go right here. This is from the Dead Street Scrolls 4Q397, uh, which is cave number four. Uh, this is where they're talking about why God had certain laws in his word concerning fornication carried out in the midst of the people they are members of. Then we have a blank spot. Isn't that interesting that they have a blank spot right after they tell you they are members of about the fornication and then leave that blank. As, uh, holiness, as it is written, holy is Israel concerning the pure animal. It is written that he shall not let two species mate. Concerning clothing, that no materials are to be mixed. Not to wear wool mixed with uh, linen, in other words. And he will not sow his field or his... Uh, uh, let me find out where that's at. You're found to be a nation's families. Uh, maybe it's the other way. Or his vineyard with two species. There it is right there. Because they are holy. But the sons of Aaron are the holiest of holy. And you know that a part of the priests and of the peoples mingle. And they unite with each other and defile the holy seed. And also their own seed with fornication. The word in Hebrew is going to be prostitutes. And this word seed in Hebrew is going to be zarim. Which is plural for seeds. Let's look at this. Here we are right here. Now, you're able to see both side by side. The Zarim, <laughs> I'm even surprised by that. <laughs> Never done that before. So that was kind of neat to be able to see it pop up side by side, which is perfect, right? Because here's Zara, seed singular. Those of you that remember, I had I played Toby a singer before where he mocked Paul for making a distinct difference between Jesus being the holy seed and he said as it is written seed singular and not seeds plural and Tovia Singer mocked Paul saying he must have been illiterate not knowing Hebrew well here you go Tovia et zarim im hazanot which is mingling with the seeds their seeds with prostitutes if you want to translate it fornication, fine. So, but this, but the holy seed is singular. Why? Because Israel is supposed to be the protector of the seed of the Messiah. All right. So I did all this, and I wanted you to be able to see this. Let me. So let's back up here. We'll take that one off now. Let's go over to. And when I was in the process of this, by the way, let me let me just see here real quick. 
Uh, you choose our fathers and gave their descendants your truthful regulations. Right? Now, here we go right here. Descendants. I want to you know, because Toby might say, well, it's just you know, maybe it's a typographical error, right? All right. So let's take and let's let's put on. How, how, how do we do that? Here we go. There we go. Got them side by side now. Here we go. Uh, again, Lazarim, right there, seeds for the word descendants. So many times they just use a different form of English. And I think I even found this in our own Bible where it uses Zarim and refers to it as descendants. But it's literally the word pluralized for seeds, plural. So I want to give at least two there as uh, just, and that's 4Q, uh, Qumran scroll 4QDA is where this was taken from. So when you, when you pull these up together, what's really fascinating. Now, if you were to just do a literal search, Barakiel Aleph Nechashe and Barakin Bukhin Kokovel Elef Nechashe. It looks like you're reading on here a thousand serpents, Brachiel and a thousand serpents. But what's fascinating about this, though, instead of saying Elef, which is the word for thousands, and Nechashe is a plural form, plural form for the word serpents. But when we're looking at the, en the Enoch translation here, they put on here, for example, Rekiel taught the signs of the shafts. Kokobel taught the signs of the stars. I don't like the way they translate this, though, when they say taught the signs. Now, I realize that Aleph also is the first letter of the Hebrew word in the, or the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hei, Vav, Zayin, Tet, Het, etc., etc., right? It also can be translated as taught. But when they say signs, they're still taking it from the word used for serpent. They're still taking it, I mean, you can translate the chash as omen or, or copper or uh, there's a lot of different ways. You, anything that's associated with a serpent, you can translate that with it. The, the worst thing you could translate it as is the word signs. There's normally no Hebrew word used for the word signs when it comes to nachash. Um, incantation, it can be translated as. Omen, it can be translated. Anything evil and wicked is what a serpent is. That's what it can be translated as. So Brachiel taught, taught the serpent way, you might want to say. Uh, then you have uh, Ezekiel. He taught the serpent's way of whatever it was. Uh, this one here, uh, Sem, uh, Semshuel, he taught the serpent's way of the sun. And this is what I find very, very interesting, especially when you go back and you look you know, at that mingling of the seed. That's what the serpent has always been about. That's what they did when they came down and they mingled their seed with the wives of the people of Genesis chapter 6. That's what they did with the priest of the Levites. The only difference is they're doing it with their children Instead, when we find that they had mingled the seed, the holy people had mingled the seed, their seed, by the way, they didn't mingle up the holy seed. The seed of Christ was never mingled up, but their own personal bloodlines were mingled up with prostitution. All right, so you get that, and then you have also, like in the case here, Really, we should use uh, two, 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 two. No, it was just that was a different one altogether. Sorry about that. So they mingled their seed when they shouldn't have done it. 
And that's where you have that right there. And they showed you how the scripture was, how the God had given those things about not mixing your clothes, not mixing your, uh, not, not crossing species and things like that. Why? Remember what it says in Enoch? Not only did they, did they sin against man, but they sinned against the animals as well. That's how serious God took that when he gave that commandment not to mix these seeds together anymore because it was to protect a bloodline for the holy seed, the seed of Christ, the Messiah to come. And not as Tovia Singer brought it out that Paul didn't know what he was talking about. Sure, Paul knew what he was talking about. It's written everywhere in the Dead Sea Scrolls. There is a plural, and it's also written in our own Bible as well. I'll prove that point later. So anyway, I'll try to come back and deal with this story on Joel for you guys later. Uh, so God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good evening.